What's up guys? Today we're going to work on this 2000 Civic LX. We're going to see if we can figure out why this wheel is pushed back in this wheel well. When inspecting the car, I can tell this fender and the bumper have both been repainted. The hood is original paint, so is the door. You can see it right here how this has a little bit different color to it. It's a little bit darker and same with I think it's a little bit harder to see on the bumper, but when you're here inspecting them in person, you can tell it has definitely been repainted. But when opening the hood, everything is original in here. The core support is still original. You can tell even the fade on the paint. There is zero frame damage. I was looking in here trying to find an indication that maybe it was crashed in the front here. So it doesn't look like anything structural to the body itself. My guess is somewhere along the lines, they may have hit something, a curb, like another car, whatever, damaged the bumper and the fender, pushed it back a little bit. That's why it is sitting a little bit further back in the wheel well. I went to a junkyard yesterday. I picked up the lower control arm with compliance arm, set of forks, and a new front spindle just in case. We're going to pull off those parts, see if we can notice maybe one is bent slightly. And if you look, it's, it's very minimal, but you can obviously tell. So the bend could be tough to see by the naked eye, where it could be maybe just a slight bend in the control arm right here. I've seen the compliance arm where this piece is bent a little bit that way after suffering a little bit of damage here. It bends, it moves the entire arm, and so this corner bends. That's all it would really take to push this wheel back. I'm going to start getting everything removed, see if we can find the source of the bend on this particular setup. And when you're under here, you can also inspect the rear lower subframe. See this one, there's no scratches. It doesn't look like it's taken any sort of damage before. That's what I meant by the frame. Like there's no frame damage in here. Nothing's bent or buckled. The tow hook is bent in a little bit. So is that side. I don't know if... I don't know what happened there. I don't know if they go straight down or not. I can't remember on a 96 2000 Civic. But we're going to remove that lower control arm, compliance arm. First thing to start with, let's get this fork removed. I'm just going to pull it off completely, give me a little bit more room with the axle. 17 millimeter nut and bolt, and a 14 millimeter bolt on top. Next, we're going to remove the ball joint. It's a cotter pin. This one has a 17 millimeter nut, it's OEM. Sometimes you'll find like an 18 or 19 millimeter on there and just get the appropriate size. Then I'll use a ball joint separator to get that removed. Next, you can remove the sway bar end link. Probably don't need to remove the top since that's not going to attach to the control arm slash compliance arm. 12 millimeter wrench on the, on the middle, 12 millimeter socket down here. Just remove it from there and the sway bar should be able to come loose because when we reinstall it, we can just slide it back in. No need to take the top one off. In the back here, two 19 millimeter bolts here and there's one more on this side right there. Then we have a 19 millimeter bolt at the front of the control arm. Hopefully there's enough room to come out here. I'm going to try it. If I do not have enough room to get it out, I will work on potentially lifting the engine a little bit, but I'm hoping there's enough room. This one easily comes out. You just have to use a ratcheting wrench to get to it. I'm going to have to go ahead and drop the sway bar here. You have two little 12 millimeter bolts that hold the, the sway bar bracket up. That should allow it to drop a little bit and I just don't have enough room to squeeze out this portion of the compliance arm. And the sway bar did drop a little bit. 
So now, pull it right out. And here I laid the old one on top of the new one. Tried lining it up as best as possible. That way everything's in the same position. It doesn't look, control arm seems to be okay. This does look a little bit off. Can you notice right here, the top one obviously is, looks like it's bent more this way, where this one sticks out that way a little bit more. That might be the issue right there. Let me look at it straight from above. See right here is like exactly straight up. You can see how the other one sticks out a little bit more. So there's such a minimal amount, that might be the difference. Let's just install it since it's very easy to get these on and off the car. I'm gonna throw it on real quick, bring it back down to the floor and see if that made any sort of difference before trying to play around with the spindle and I doubt the fork took any sort of, I need to pull it off real quick. You know, forks are generally, uh, I don't really see them get too damage, like in terms of the straightness compared to the opposite side. I really don't think it would be the fork, but you never know. We're gonna try the compliance arm first and see if that helps out. All right, so with the old arm off, I have everything completely reinstalled. Looking at it, even right here, it looks better already. You can see, this kind of seems like the center, the high point. Let's put the wheel on, let's get this car on the ground and see if it has fixed my problem. All right guys, let's get this thing back to the ground. Let's see where it sits now. How's that looking, let's check. Oh, there we go. Looks like we fixed that issue. That actually looks like, that's perfect. Same amount of room, centered out. Can live with that, I'm sure it can be aligned correctly now. And that was a really easy fix, guys. You know, it took me all of 20 minutes to get this one removed. Not really too much to handle. You can essentially change out just the, the compliance arm alone. You know, Skunk 2 makes brand new ones if you wanted to just buy a brand new unit. I went, I went to the junkyard yesterday. I just looked for a car that still had everything on it, like the wheel, and that way you could, I could gauge it and see where it was sitting. So the car I pulled it off of was in perfect shape. There wasn't any sort of front end damage on that car either. And that has now fixed my problem. And it looked like it was just right here, a very minimal bend. And that's usually what happens, say if, imagine the tire and wheel are here. So if it hits, all this, this, this stress on it, since this is rubber, this piece generally can flex. So that's just gonna move with it. Whereas this one, I guess it took the brunt of it, even though it's surrounded by this big rubber bushing as well. Like when it bends it and locked into place with those huge 19 millimeters, I guess it's locked down and this is a hard rubber so it's it must have bent it a little bit where when it hit obviously this was off and you could kind of see how the difference from the new and the old one so something very minimal didn't have to mess with the spindle spindle was for this model also so that's great i know this one is in good shape what i will do when opportunity presents itself place the ball joint place the wheel bearing That'll be already be ready. I'll just swap that onto here when I start working on the suspension of this car. Forks, I can always use forks for any kind of car, swapping uh, coilovers or stock shocks around. If you're curious, this is my new daily driver, 2000 Honda Civic LX. I ended up getting this and selling my EK hatch only because I wanted something with power windows, power locks, and four doors for my daughter. It was kind of a pain using the, the hatch, picking her up back and forth. And since I haven't worked on my CRV yet, once I fix all the oil leaks on that, I'll start using that more. But this is just a second daily driver for me. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope that helps some of you guys out that may be experiencing some sort of issues. And this is pretty similar on a lot of a lot of our Hondas where you know it get hit, something gets hit and it's bent. Very easy to replace a lot of these parts. You can purchase some of these brand new, hit up a junkyard, but that'll take care of your issues for you. Thanks for tagging along, guys. We'll see you next time.